Jesus suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped, a crown made of thorns pressed into his head. Bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered up the hill to Golgotha. Each step of the journey getting worse, spit on, cursed, and mocked. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. God hears you and he is answering your prayer. The love of God is being poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This one I really like. This is a really good one. You're going to really enjoy this. I just really love this one when I, when I was going through it the other day. Um, some people have been asking about when the timeline of the escape will be and how do we know um, what exact day it's falling on and, and, and what, what, you know, why is it the seventh day or the eighth day? And so I kind of went through this and, and I have an answer for everybody. Let, let's kind of go through Genesis 7 again. The answer is hiding in here. Genesis 7, we'll go to verse 4. It says, for yet seven days, and I shall cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days. For yet seven days. What else is seven days long, brothers and sisters? What are we looking at that's seven days long? Let's go back to the calendar. Isn't Passover eight days? One, two, three, four five six seven and then the eighth day now watch what he says watch what else he says in genesis 7 he says for yet seven days right and we go to genesis seven ten. what does it say let's take a look at that let's take a closer look at it and it came to pass after seven days after it doesn't say on the seventh day or before the seventh day. It says after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. What's after seven days, brothers and sisters? What's after the seventh day? The eighth day. There it is. Seven days. That's the seventh day. And he said after the seventh day, the flood waters were upon the earth. The eighth day. Isn't that what we have on our, on our calendar, on our timeline, brothers and sisters? Look at this. This is the eighth day. It's after the seventh day. After the seventh day is the eighth day, April the 4th. And then the waters are upon the earth for 40 days. There it is. 
It's been right in front of us the whole time. The whole time it's been right in front of us. This is the 40 days of the flood upon the earth. After, you see, after seven days. After seven days, the waters were upon the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. There's the answer, brothers and sisters. The waters were upon the earth. Now, I looked at this and I said, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something looks familiar here. If this is after the seventh day, okay, after the seventh, which is the eighth day, and then the waters were on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, this is the eighth day, and then the flood waters were on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Is he talking about the flood waters being Yahshua HaMashiach? After the seventh day, which is the eighth day, and then the flood waters were on the earth for 40 days. What do we start this off with, brothers and sisters? What do we start all of this off with? All these verses where Yahshua HaMashiach calls himself the waters of life. The waters of life. Living water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Is it possible that the Noah story is what we is a type and shadow that after seven days, which is the eighth day, the flood waters, the flood waters were on the earth for forty days and forty nights, just like we are showing right here. That on the after the seventh day is the eighth day. This is the eighth day. We've shown that on the calendar. And the flood waters are upon the earth for forty days and forty nights. Yahshua HaMashiach will be here on the earth for 40 days and the 40 nights continually. And as we show, brothers and sisters, this ends exactly where Yahshua HaMashiach told them it would end. Second month, 27th day, May 14th, 33 AD, it's playing itself out to the exact same timeline and date again this year. The waters are on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights ending exactly on the date that it was in 33 AD. The anniversary of Israel, May the 14th. What I believe we have going on, brothers and sisters, is our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, is the type and shadow of the waters that are upon the earth. In the beginning of the flood story, it's clearly the eighth day. It clearly has to be the eighth day because it says after, after seven days, not before the seventh day, not on the seventh day, but after seven days, it is now the 40th day. I'm sorry, the eighth day right here. After seventh day is this eighth day. And then it's 40 days as we showed. Eighth day, 40th day, the same way it was. In 33 AD, the 40th day is the same day that the flood ended. The 40th day ends when Yahshua HaMashiach ascends into heaven. And that's what we're showing, brothers and sisters, that this 40 days, as in the story of Noah, is the same 40 days. And Yahshua HaMashiach is the representation of the flood waters upon the earth for 40 days. And I have more teaching on this, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. But I just, I just wanted to, I'm going to build up to this now. I'm going to give you one more teaching, and then I'm going to build up more upon these waters of what I found. And I found some of this stuff last night, and it was just, just mind-blowing, what you're about to see. So let me get through this, this one more teaching. And this, this teaching does involve the waters, too. But then the next one is really good. You're going to, you're going to love this one. Okay? So let's build on this. So we just showed the living waters and Yahshua HaMashiach and referring to himself in many verses that he is in fact the living waters. And we've seen all these scriptures. And now we see in, in the story of Genesis that the waters were upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights after the seventh day. So let's build on this a little bit more. I want to show you something very, very astonishing that I just found 
um, a few days ago. And, and, and this was just really just amazing. Let's get into this. It's in Luke 23. And we're going to go into that right now. But I want you to remember everything we just taught because it's going to build upon that. Let's go to Luke 23, and I believe it's 31. We'll start in 28. 23, 28. Okay, this is, this is the time of the crucifixion. Okay. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that have never bare and the paps which have never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us. And to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And I looked at this, I said, green tree. He's referring to himself as a green tree. Why is Yahshua HaMashiach referring to himself as a green tree? And what you're about to see is just absolutely amazing. Watch this. When we go into the word green, what's the meaning of the word green? It means as if with rain. As if with rain. And we, when we dig a little bit deeper, it means especially a shower, a rain. So if he's saying, for if they do these things in a shower, in a rain, Right? Green tree means especially a shower or a rain. What does the word tree mean? Let's dig into that one a little bit deeper. A vessel. A vessel. By analogy, a pitcher. A sixth of Amodius. And when I saw that, I was taken back. I said, you know, that sounds familiar. It sounds like something else that we've taught about. What else do we, where, where else did we find this? This is very interesting. So this, so this word tree means a vessel, a pitcher, a sixth of Emodius. And the word green means to like shower, like a rain, a rain shower, a pitcher of water, a sixth of Emodius. Doesn't this sound familiar, brothers and sisters, to, to one of the teachings we had in our last videos? Where else did we see this from? Let's go to Luke twenty-two, ten. 2210. Let's pull it up on the screen here. And let's read that. And he said unto them, this is during the Passover, the Lord's giving instruction to his disciples. And he said unto them, behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Here we go, brothers and sisters. The water is now being represented again. A pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. Wow. Let's, let's, let's look into this a little further. Water meaning what? There it is. Water as if rainy. And is it the same word that we just saw in, in um, the last verse? There it is. Especially a shower. Rain. Rain. This water is referring to the same especially a shower, a rain, as we just saw in Luke 23, 31, where Jesus Christ called himself the green tree. Are you catching that, brothers and sisters? Where Jesus called himself the green tree. Let's look into that again. 23, 28 to 31. For if they do these things in a green tree, and there's the word tree, a pitcher, a six of Amodius, a vessel, a pitcher, and green means water, rain, as if rain, especially a shower, rain. That's what the word green means. And this means pitcher, to shower and rain as a pitcher, as a vessel. And we go back now to Luke twenty two ten. That's what he's telling his disciples. It's the same thing. 
22.10. Sorry about that. And he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the house, city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. It's the same word. When we dig into that, it's the exact same word, especially a shower of rain. This pitcher of water is a shower of rain. It says to follow him into the house where he entereth, to the guest chamber, to the upper room that is furnished. Make it ready. He's telling them to make the Passover ready. And so where else do we see all of this? How do we bring all of this together? Let's go into John 2, 6, where we found this story to begin with. And we taught this in, uh, in our, both of our last videos. Let's go to John 2, 6. This is, this, this is the wedding at Cana. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, the six water pots. The six water pots. Isn't that what we just saw? When we're going into Luke 23, and I believe it's 31, green tree and tree means the sixth of Amodius, a measure, a pitcher, a sixth, an analogy of a pitcher. Isn't that what we're seeing, brothers and sisters, and what we just saw in John? Let's go back to John 2. There it is, six. Six water pots of stone. And the water pots is an analogy of the pitchers. A water jar, right? Water as if raining. You see that? Let's do that again. Let's go into water pots. A water pot, a water jar, water as if rainy, and boom, especially a shower of rain. This is the exact same verbiage where Jesus Christ called himself the green tree. This six water pots is exactly the same verbiage that we find in Luke 23, 28 to 31, and the exact same verbiage we find in Luke 22, 10 with the man with the pitcher, especially a rain, especially a shower in rain. Let's look at that again. 20, Luke 23, 31. Oh, we're building, brothers and sisters. This is all going to start coming together real quickly. And green means as if with rain. And there it is. The same word. Jesus Christ. In Luke 23, 31, referring to himself as the green tree. Is the exact same verbiage he's talking about when he tells his disciples in Luke 22, 10 to find the man with the pitcher of water. And it's the exact same verbiage he's using in the analogy of the wedding at Cana. And the water pots means the exact same thing. All three stories, brothers and sisters, are referring to Jesus Christ as the water, the shower, the rain. He's letting us know, brothers and sisters, he's letting us absolutely know that in Luke 23, 31, at the moment of his crucifixion, what's going on is he's referring to himself as the green tree. And this green tree represents the story we have in Luke twenty two ten, the man with the pitcher. He's reminding them of the story of the man with the pitcher. And he's reminding them of the story of when he turned the water into wine at the wedding of Cana. Do you see, brothers and sisters, once again, Yahshua HaMashiach is referring to himself as the water as the living waters. And where do we see this story of the man with the pitcher? Let's go to Luke 22, 10, the man with the pitcher. Remember we showed all this before in our prior teachings. Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entereth in. And when we pulled up Stellarium, what did we find brothers and sisters? Oh, it's, it's uh kind of losing itself on me. <laughs> I'll have to re redo that in a little bit. Um, Maybe we'll put it in the next video, but what we were showing, if you look at our two prior videos, 
We have it in our two prior videos where what's happening is this, and I have it on a chart, is Jupiter, Jupiter and Mercury are entering into the sign of Aquarius, the man with the pitcher. Okay? He's entering into... Jupiter and Mercury are into the sign of Aquarius where he's entering the sign of the man with the pitcher of water. And, and what's happening there, brothers and sisters, is he's holding a water pot in that sign. And in that sign, Venus is moving into the water part of, of that sign with the man with the pitcher. And that's what he's referring to, brothers and sisters, when he talks about the man with the pitcher of water. And please go to our prior videos to, to see that part. I was, I was just going to replay it a little bit, um, but my uh, solarium is kind of acting up right now. But basically what you're going to find is you're going to find in the stars, in the constellation of Aquarius, Venus, represented by Jesus, is moving into the constellation of Aquarius with the man with the pitcher of water. And that's what he's referring to himself in here. And that's exactly what we're finding when we go to Luke 23, 31, where he's referring to himself as the green tree, the man with the pitcher of water. It's the exact same story hiding within this verbiage of a green tree. So when Jesus Christ is referring to himself as the pitcher of water, the water of eternal life, this is where we see Venus. If you go back to the prior videos, you'll see Venus entering into the house of Aquarius. And that's why he tells us in Luke 22:10 to follow the man with the pitcher into the house in which he enters. Follow him into the house where he enters. The house is the house of Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius. He's telling us to follow him into the house of Aquarius. And that occurs when brothers and sisters right here. 1260 days from the Revelation 12 sign is the sign I'm talking about. And then 1290 days, 30 days later is Resurrection Sunday. Jerusalem, 70 years and 70 days, April 4th, 2020, 20, I'm sorry, 2021. And as the floodwaters were upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, Yahshua HaMashiach will be visiting us as the floodwaters. As I just showed you in the verses, he's referring to himself as the showers of rain in all of those scriptures. And he'll be here for 40 days, which ends on the anniversary of Israel, like it did in 33 AD on May the 14th. Brothers and sisters, let's have an understanding that Yahshua HaMashiach over and over in many verses refers to himself as the living waters. In all of these verses and more, there's several more we didn't even discuss, but all of these verses he's discussing himself and, and describing himself and even other prophets describe him as the living waters. And as I just showed you in, in Luke twenty three thirty one. And Luke twenty two ten, this water all means the same thing, especially a rain shower. And when Yahshua HaMashiach is calling himself the green tree, he is referring to himself as the rains, as the waters. And in the word tree itself is referring to the man with the pitcher. It's literally referring to that exact story. A sixth, remember there was six water pots, a pitcher. He's referring to that exact story. He's bringing them back into time and bringing them into remembrance. That's what's going on, brothers and sisters. All of the verses, all of these verses are referring to the exact same thing. The shower, the rain shower. Now watch how we're going to tie all this together. You see this? A shower, the rain shower. Watch this. You ready? Here it comes. Let's, let's see if we can bring all of this, all of this New Testament stuff that I just showed you, all these verses showing that this green tree and the man with the pitcher and the wedding at Cana are all referring to this shower, this rain. Let's see if we can tie it back into Genesis 7. Did Noah tell us the same thing? Could it be that Noah told us? Genesis 7, 12. And the rain 
was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. The rain being Jesus Christ, we just went over this, right? Especially the shower, the rain, Yahshua HaMashiach being the water, and the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. What does this word mean, rain? To rain, to shower. To rain, to shower. To shower violently. To rain, to shower. The rain, Yahshua HaMashiach, was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Isn't that what we're talking about? When the floods began after the seventh day, isn't that what he told us? After that, which is the eighth day and April the 4th is the eighth day of Passover. Then the floodwaters were upon the earth for 40 days. Isn't that what he's saying? The rain the rain was upon the earth for 40 days. Yahshua HaMashiach being represented by the rain upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Drop the mic. It's all tied together, brothers and sisters. Embedded inside Genesis 7 and Genesis 8, Noah has told us that the flood begins after the seventh day. And we show what after the seventh day is, right? We've, we've shown that over and over in this video. Here's the seventh day of Passover. After the seventh day is the eighth day. And then the floodwaters are upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. After the seventh day, which is the eighth day, the floodwaters, the rain, the showers were upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. It's the same event, brothers and sisters. This is exactly the event that Noah is telling us when we go to Genesis seven twelve, when he says the rain, the shower was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. It's the exact same thing we're looking at when we go to Luke 23, 31, and he calls himself the green tree. And when we look up what the word green means, shower, rain. It's the same thing we're finding in Genesis 7 to 12. Same thing. And the rain was upon the earth after the seventh days, after seven days, which is the eighth day, eighth day of Passover, Resurrection Sunday, the rain, there it is, the rain, the shower was upon the earth for 40 days. Drop the mic. The rain, Yahshua HaMashiach, will be on the earth for 40 days as the floods, as the waters were upon the earth. And that's exactly the hidden story that we're finding in the story of Genesis 7 and 8. Noah told us. It's embedded inside this story. Yahshua HaMashiach is the waters, the rains. And that's what we're seeing, brothers and sisters, when we look at these scriptures. He is the living waters. He is the rains. He is the water of life. He is the rivers of living water. He's told us over and over again. He is the green tree. He is the giver of life. When we're athirst, we go to him and we drink his living waters. That's what he's telling us. And Jesus Christ will be upon the earth as the floodwaters, as we've just now shown in this video, Yahshua HaMashiach will be upon the earth for 40 days as the floodwaters. That's why he told us in Luke 17, 26, as the days of Noah. As the days of Noah. That's why he told us the days of Noah. It's the exact same days of Noah. We showed that, right? There it is. Second month, 27th day is the 40th day. That 40th day is right here. It's the exact same date, the ending date of May 14th. He is literally telling us he will be the floodwaters upon the earth for these 40 days as if the flood was on the earth back in those days for 40 days. And it ends precisely when it ended the first time of his resurrection on May the 14th, Israel's anniversary in 33 AD. It will also be the exact same time frame this year, May 14th, 2021. Brothers and sisters, we've just shown you that from Genesis through Luke and John, Yahshua HaMashiach over and over refers to himself as the living waters. And now we've tied in those living waters to exactly the flood story 
in Genesis 7, where he tells us in Genesis 7 that the rain, rain, the shower, Yahshua HaMashiach, the living waters, was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. It's an exact type and shadow of what we've been looking for, brothers and sisters. It's the exact type and shadow from what we've been all looking for. Whoa! 